as we heard briefly yesterday, you know, at age 14, uh, his village in, in Malawi was subject to a severe famine. His family had no money to send him to high school. But based, basically on a diagram in a library book, he was able to assemble junk parts into a windmill that provided irrigation and electricity for his village. It looked like, like this. <laughs> we heard about, the, Emeka heard about this story. William was at the conference. We invited him onto the stage. By then, he was 19. And, um, you know, I had this impromptu conversation with him. And I said, you know, how on earth did you do that? And he said, I try, and I made it. <laughs> and that became the rallying cry of the conference, frankly. Well, so here we are, uh, 10 years on. You know, William's actually here. And I don't know, I think we should probably invite him and see if anything happens since then. William, come Kwamba, come on. Welcome back, William, welcome back. Thank you, thank you. It's good to be back. <laughs> So, I mean, did anything change after that last conference or back to life as normal? <laughs> uh, in the ten, uh, 10 years past, like, uh, a lot of things have changed. Um, so that time I couldn't go to school. Uh, once I was here at the conference, I was able to go back to school. I had the opportunity to go to African Deshipa Academy where I graduated in 2015. So I was there. Um, and, I, um, I think you made it the whole way through, right? The, the, that happened. Yeah. That was a I, <laughs> wow. Wow. <laughs> so I graduated at the African Leadership Academy in 2010. And after I graduated there, I also went uh, to university. I went to uh, Dartmouth College. Dartmouth where... College in the United States. <laughs> William, um, I mean, that's one of the US's top universities. That must have been pretty challenging going there. How much of that course were you able to complete? It was, it was really like challenging when I started. It was mostly like climbing, uh, climbing um, Mount um, Kilimanjaro without <laughs> oxygen. So, but I think um, one thing that I really like used when I was there, really like reaching out to my professors if I was having like some difficulties. At the end of the time, I was able to, uh, to finish my course and I graduated in 2014. Wow. So, <laughs> and I mean, you, you, you have this inventor's mind, clearly, from the age of 14. What are you working on now? Uh, right now, I'm working on the DC power pump. Uh, as like in many, many people in my country, in Malawi, almost like 80% of the people are farmers. But each and every year, we are struggling to feed our population. One of the problems is that because our farming is depend on um, land-fed agriculture, so sometimes when it's drought or if during the dry season, more farmers are not doing anything. So what I'm doing, I'm working with farmers, designing that pump that they can use solar panel or they can use car battery to pump the water and they can be able to, uh, to sell the crops to the supermarket. So I'm talking to some of the supermarket to finance the pump so that in return they'll be able like, to to feed their families and also to be able to find the money uh, to send their kids to school. So wait a second, as, as well as a pump and a solar sort of system to power it, you've worked out a financing system as well where, where farmers can be funded in part by the supermarkets? Yeah, so I'm talking to the supermarkets so that they're going to be able to produce what they want and the, each farmers who have like a quarter what they can produce, at the end of the day, they will be able to pay off their loan and they will start like making profit in a few years. Oh, that's amazing. And what's actually happened at your own village? Uh, so in my own village, there's a lot of things that have changed. Uh, we have, I've also like installed solar water pump that everyone in the area, they can come to get water uh, for free. And we've also like worked on the primary school that I went to. The school was built almost 60 years ago with the capacity of 400 students. The time that I was going there, we were 2,000 students. So the classes were not enough and they were not in a good shape. So far, we have managed to work with the people in the village to rebuild the school so that the students can be able to learn in a good learning environment. And both your parents are, are running businesses now in the village, I think, yes? Yeah, all of my parents, they are running business. We have a uh, business of like maize meal, the grand maize, maize, maize for other people, and they also 
we, I also line a business of like transportation so that the people, they can go from uh, places to places. And meanwhile, I think you've helped your sisters go to school as well. You have five sisters? I have uh, six sisters. So all of, the, all of my younger sisters, I've managed to help them like, to complete with the, at least like their high school uh, education. One, two of them, they are still in high school, and one is in university. She will be like, graduating next year, so she'll be finishing up. That's, that's fantastic. And while all this was going on, you, you managed to write uh, a book that has sold incredibly well, The Boy Who Harnessed the Wind. That's taken you um, really around the world, uh, people wanting to hear what you've learned. What, what has that experience been like? Do you have any stories you can share from that? The yeah, the experience going around sharing my story with the uh, a lot of people around the world has yeah, been a little exciting experiment uh, for me because a lot of people sometimes when I go up, they come up to me that I... I completely like, dropped out of school, but once I had like, your story, I was able to go back to school to finish up with my degree, some of them going to do like, engineering. So to me, when I was writing a book, I was trying to share my story with other people around the world. Maybe some people, they might be like, in the same situation that I was in when I was doing my work, that they can get like, inspired and do some project that they can solve problems in their communities. And seeing that is being happening in a lot of like, communities where I travel around, it's really exciting to me, and uh, it's, I really like, appreciate uh, that. So, what's next? Is there, is there a dream? You, you have this extraordinary mind and this extraordinary will, I would say. What do you, what do you dream of for the coming years? So, uh, my dream is like, to continue the work that I'm doing, um, trying to find the ways of like, solving some of the problems that people are facing in my community or in the world in general. So, I'm still working a lot of work into um, agriculture and also like, into like, energy. One of the work that I'm doing is I'm also trying to put up a lot of like, modules, information that people can use that information to do their own project in their own community. Because the way I started my work, I was inspired by a book. So if I can give out like, that information to a lot of young people, there's a lot of talented young people around the world that they can be able like, to inspire by that information to do the project in their own community to solve their problems. That's what I'm hoping like, to continue doing, uh, to share my um, experience and my knowledge. William, you, you strike me as such a symbol of all that we've been talking about this week when we've been thinking positively, you know, that the, that the answers are here, that with the right ingenuity and the right determination, we can try, we can make it happen. You, you are, really are an inspiration. <laughs> Thanks for what happened 10 years ago. Thank you. William Kankwamba. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.